John Dodson, former MMA fighter, probably could still get down if he wanted to. He's that good, but now competing in bare knuckle. He's got a huge fight coming up against J.R. Ridge at BKFC 48. That fight is coming up in August. It's for the vacant flyweight title over at BKFC. Again, August 11th. It's a Friday. And for more information, go to the Bare Knuckle website, which is bkfc.com. If you want to get tickets, you want to go to the Albuquerque area and check out this fight, or, of course, how to watch the event as well. Welcome back to uh, Junkie Radio. How are you, John? I'm doing good. And just to correct you on that, uh, I am still doing MMA. I just got done fighting. Uh, uh, Tomono, this dude out in Japan, he was the number one flyweight, sitting there on a 14-fight win streak, and I snapped that pretty easily. So I'm going out there and bare knuckle doing both of them with MMA and bare knuckle boxing. Nice. All right. Well, like I said, you could probably get down in that sport if you wanted to. I just hadn't – I didn't know about that fight. So um, – and guess what? Your name popped up the other day. We had Demetrius Johnson on, and we asked him, who was your toughest matchup ever? He hadn't fought Marias for the third time yet, so he had fought him twice. He fought Benavidez twice. He fought um, Cejudo twice. So I'm thinking maybe it's going to be one of them, I guess. No disrespect to you, but it was you. It was you, man. And um, he, he, you know, I thought it was great. You know, it's one of the all-time greats. And he talked about just, you know, how dangerous you were, how quick you were. And and uh, I thought that was a, a nice compliment. Yeah, always a great compliment because the fact that sitting there seeing scary John Dodson's back in action and making sure I can land the heavy blows and being able to control the distance and being looking for more vicious and ferocious style of fighting coming from myself. And that's what the that's what the, the John Dotson, the Demetrius Johnson fear. The one he kept on mm-hmm. saying that hit him the hardest, sat there taking his soul and making sure that it had a questionable win against him. Well, I still lost, but still. <laughs> Who was your toughest fight ever? Be honest with you, it has to be with DJ. He had to be the most hardest puzzle for me to solve. Like, no matter how many times I figure I could take him down, I could hit him with a quick strike. DJ was literally my toughest opponent to this date. Like everybody else, I can I know what I was like what I was going in for with him. It was just a like a mystery. He was like a giant enigma that I had to figure out. Nice. All right. Well, nice little payback compliment for him. Um, John, let me ask you this. Because you've been in our studio, we've interviewed you many times. You just always have this positive attitude. You always got a smile on your face. My brother likes to ask fighters a question from time to time. When do you turn on the switch? With you, I almost seem like there is no switch. You're even smiling in your fights. So is there a nasty side inside of you still that we just don't see? Or are there, like, if we were to ask your friends, would they go, oh, man, he can be an asshole? Or whatever. Like, you just seem like a nice guy, but somehow you're you are pretty vicious, whether it's a ring or a cage. Uh, you guys haven't noticed I'm like Bruce Banner. Like, I'm always angry. I'm angry all the time. I hate life. Everything's all about everything. But at the same time, I love, like, literally love being in those moments. Like, life for me is ups and downs and turmoils and being aggressive. But you still got to be able to enjoy those little things. Like, I'm angry. I'm, I'm unhappy. I'm like everybody else in the world. But I like to highlight the best version of myself and continue on loving the moment. And that's where I get into. And that's where I'm in the fight. Like, everyone's like, oh, you got to turn in this fight or flight mode. I was like, no, I'm just enjoying being here in the present time, hitting somebody, getting hit, taking down, and just knowing the fact I'm blessed on being able to do this. Like, training, fighting, everything, I'm blessed to do it. Like, I'm still breathing, and that's a gift in itself. And people need to understand that's what we got to do. Embrace those moments and just be happy with everything that comes in life. No give me an it. example. Give me an example of when you are angry, for example. Nah, man, I'm like, I'm angry when I stub my toe, when I have to yell at my kids and discipline them. <laughs> right now, like, I'm always mad because I have to like remind them to do the dishes and do them right, not just leave grease everywhere. <laughs> but like, mm-hmm. I'm angry when I have mad road rage all the time. I yell at people. I'm in the car. Be a, I'm one of those midgets that be angry and should have short man syndrome. <laughs> have you ever gotten out of the car? Has it gotten that far? Of course, I've always gotten out of the car. What do you mean? I'm always like I said, I'll get out of well, the car. I mean, you're, you're a like, professional hey, fighter, so it's not really it. fair. But at the same time, I imagine there's a lot of people that want a piece of you when they see you. So uh, how far like, has it gotten on the road rage? 
now they get they see me, they look at me, and then they understand. They're like, ah, his ears are kind of messed up. If he takes me down, he is gonna choke me out. But you see mm-hmm. that little car scene that behind me. Most of the time, I only get super raged out because of the fact that I have kids. Like, I'm do- like, mm. well, my life, I don't really care about too much about. Like, I'm going out there enjoying it, but I want to give the opportunities to my family and my kids and have that be the best for me. And if someone's trying to take their life, that's when I get upset. Has anyone, have you ever gotten out of the car, someone saw you and they go, oh, that's John Dodson. I want, I don't want none. Like, did, they, did your shame ever get you out of a road rage fight? No. They, everyone always wants to pick on a midget, no matter if, uh, if it's fair or not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they just look at me and they realize I'm two feet tall. They definitely think they can handle me. But and, I don't sit there and try to fight anybody. I just sit there and yell at them. And if they swing, I'll just take them down and tickle them into submission and have them be fully embarrassed. <laughs> they got, this is what happened. They chose to pick up a to fight a midget, try to cut them off, think that they're going to swing and punch them. And I'm controlling them on the ground and tickling them to, uh, until their embarrassment. And whoever's filming it can sit there and show that I never struck. Hit the man. And he's peeing in his pants because he got tickled in the mission. That's funny. All right. This is for the vacant title, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yep, this is going to be for actually the first ever. So I'll, I'll be the inaugural flyweight champion as soon as I win this. Once I win mm-hmm. this title, the belt will be the first ever person to ever hold it. It's no longer vacant, no longer sitting there having a questionable doubt. Like, I've been sitting the standard for VKSC who, how flyweight should be. I mean, everybody keeps on saying, oh, John, you've been climbing up the rankings. No, I'm the one who's setting the standard. Like, I'm setting the bar. I'm setting it super high, and I want to make sure I can continue on doing it until I retire. I'm going to go undefeated in this weight class at 125, whether it be at BKFC or in Ryzen in Japan. Who else do you think from MMA in the flyweights? Give a shout-out to a flyweight. Who, who else do you think could come over and do well? Just because either you fought with them, trained with them, or you think they got what it takes – to do what you're doing in VKSC. Is there anyone out there that, that you think would do good? Of course. Uh, I got some crazy Brazilians like John Lineker. Mm-hmm. That dude would have be massive in bare knuckle. He would go out there and just start clubbing people. Same thing with Diego Brandao. Man, there's a ton of guys that are actually been out there and doing the game. Like current fighters right now, I think would be a Tito Vera. I know he would want to, but he'd be amazing in it with this in and out motion. Corey Hamstegan, who can who's just very elusive with the striking man there's a lot of people out there that really i want to go out there and this is like kind of bridging the gap between bare knuckle or between boxing and mma because we can go ahead and utilize that clinch everyone keeps on giving us the benefit of doubt and saying oh mma fighters can't go ahead and box with these boxers but i want to test my skill against one of these dudes hopefully coming up soon one of these professional boxers who's a world champion and thinks that they can go ahead and take on a, sp- a skill a skill set. Like, I know Austin Trout went out there fought Diego Sanchez, and then that was kind of like a testimony to a brawler versus a boxer. But I'm a boxer who's been doing MMA for a long time. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. I'm sure they'll be happy to hear that you gave them that kind of a lift that they could do well in the sport. Um, okay, so in mixed martial arts, we know that when you get to the championship level, if you're the champion – you can get pay-per-view points, higher salaries, or anything like that. Does it work the same in BKFC, or is it kind of like the same purse? Whatever contract you sign, the purse stays the same. Like, are there perks to fighting in title fights at BKFC? Be honest with you, I haven't figured that out just yet. But once I do, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me turn it over to Goes. Goes. What do you have for John Dodson, our guest here on MMA Junkie Radio? What we've known from you, as always, we've always known you as John Dotson, the MMA guy. But you went over to BKFC, and it seems so natural for you. But I don't want to say that, you know, in the case of, like, say, like a Mike Perry, we all where we all go, man, maybe this guy should have always been over there, right? He's been so good at it. For you, does one kind of need the other, and does one kind of uh, re-energize the other for you? Uh, tell you the truth, it's striking and striking. So I'm going to go out there and bomb on people the way that I know how to. Like, I keep on making sure that I want to be known as the world's most dangerous striker at flyweight. So this is the best way for me to do it, be able to do it in NMA or BKFC, and hopefully one day be doing it in boxing. I don't see myself retiring anytime soon, so just yet. You know, George talked about your demeanor and and how it seems like you're just having so much fun. Have you, I know you just said you don't, you, you haven't thought about retiring or anything, but have you ever thought about what you could do outside of mixed martial arts that would give you that same high that you get from martial arts, from boxing, all that? 
uh, probably do some American Ninja Warrior again, some parkour, do some stunt mo- stunt works and some movies. You know, the good old-fashioned stuff that I'm already doing right now. <laughs> like, I met, have, I trained over at Ninja Warrior Gym over here. Like, I was called Ninja Force. Be sitting there having some fun, playing around with these guys, jumping around, doing that American Ninja Warrior stuff. Uh, my buddy did parkour, so I do go to the tumbling mats with them here and there so we can go have some fun. And I actually do stunts here in Albuquerque as well. So since we're here in the land, uh, in Somaliwood, what they call it in, in movie land here, <laughs> I'm trying to get on the stunt work, try to rise my stock in and being in the movie industry, I don't ever want to see this face being on the big screen, like having actors like saying lines and stuff. But if one day I can go ahead and be an actor, I'll I'll try that out. Is there any unfinished business for you? Not in the sense of maybe rematches or anything, but just things that you've always wanted to do, whether it in BKFC, boxing, or MMA. Any anything that you've always wanted that you haven't been able to get, but you think can still happen? Are you serious? We're about talking about it right now. We need to get me a title. I'm going to make sure I can go get the BKFC title, then get me a Ryzen title, and then keep on doing it in multiple stacks and making sure I can go ahead and be crown myself a king instead of being an uncrowned king. Everybody's favorite fighter sitting there talking about, I'm one of the happiest dudes that you've ever seen without a belt. I just want one. Just one belt. <laughs> I, I was going to say, you said it at the end, but I think you could do some acting. I also think you could probably do some uh announcing you know uh, you probably already have to tell you the truth but y- you you do have a great personality and like i say a lot of times in combat sports they want fighters that have been successful and you being successful in two sports you command attention you know when you speak about strategies and things like that so i think you could do well they might even t- tell you to paper down on the announcer table though well i don't know if, if i have the personality for three people uh I'll be doing some ring announcing, but I'll try to do it on some live streaming so I can go ahead and work on my clarity of vocal pronunciations because uh, I sound like a dumbass most of the time when I'm talking out to people, <laughs> especially when I'm trying to commentate. Man, I want to say some random things and I want to get it off my chest, but my mouth just doesn't move as fast as my mind works. Rise, your career with Ryzen and BKF scenes, BKFC seem to be complimenting each other. You're doing well, but... Could we ever see you back at either the UFC, Bellator, or PFL if they were to adopt the Manila division? Is that something Man, that is see Either one of those, just in case of one, if, if the money's right. To be honest with you, they put me in for the right time, and I'm kind of a little salty that UFC let me go because of the fact that I feel like I have unfinished business being a champion and being one of the most dominant flyweights that they ever had. They let me go before I get a chance to. Bellator, I mean, they're just help opening up that 125 division, so... I mean, we don't know. I've been calling out Horiguchi for a long time, and we'll see if that's the time coming. And the Bellator and Ryzen does do that crossover, so I'll probably be sticking with Ryzen and BKFC for right now. And even though you're 38, flyweight's no problem, or would you be more of a bantamweight? I don't know. Yeah, flyweight's still no problem. I, I was like a fluffy one, uh, 135er, and then everybody keeps on calling me like uh, Roy, a Roy Dow 25er, so it's kind of weird. When I went back down to my normal weight class, everybody's like, oh, man, you get it. We have to be on something. I was like, no, I'm just actually in shape, in camp, and just a dominant force. How many kids do you have, by the way? I got three kids. I have one son and then two girls. Okay. All right. I was just thinking, man, he's yelling at his kids for not dry, drying the dishes right, but they're still using a, a, a car seat. They can't be that good if they're that little, but you must have no, older man, kids. No, man, I have an 11, 7, and a 4-year-old. Very cool. All right. Well, congratulations on that. Thanks for the time here on Junkie Radio. Thanks for popping back. You didn't have to, but we appreciate it. Hopefully your phone cools off. Hopefully your no, phone becomes as cool as you. No, nah, man, it, it cooled off because I literally threw it in the, in the frizz. As soon as it cooled off, I called you guys right back. As soon as it was allowing me to like, go ahead and go back on. Like, I'll send you the text and uh, the screenshot. I took a screenshot of it. It says, temperatures are too hot for your phone. You have to wait till it cools off. It was like, ah! <laughs> so we did it. So. Nice. All right, John. Thanks for the time. Oh, no problem. Uh, you have a good one.